The details of the night of Friday, June 20, 2014, replay over and over for Yanisha Brown Bloomfield. It's the night her daughter, Samonia, affectionately called Poochie, was taken from the bed where she slept next to her baby sister in their old harbour St. Catherine home. I get up from after three in the morning. I was going to the market and I woke up my husband and he took the load to the bus stop where I carried the babies and I brought Poochie with me to the market that day. We came in after eight, he came in sometime after nine. And he left afterward for a setup and Poochie and I, the baby was home, the baby was sleeping. Poochie and I was eating and watching the television. When I finished eat, I went to the bathroom to bed. I took out my clothes, I hear the goat, the kid crying. And I went outside, leaving the door open because it's just around the corner, just outside behind the bathroom. I went next door to my sister-in-law's house, which is the same place in the yard, and I called her husband to help me to call the goat foot, and he came and helped. I went back inside, closed up, Baby was on the bed. Two baby was on the bed sleeping. Went to the bathroom, have a shower. Came back, came out of the bathroom, walked through their room. The baby was still on the bed. Went inside my room, lie down on the bed. Don't know when I drop asleep. But I know when I wake up, the baby was gone. It's the one call Chris Bloomfield, a farmer and a devout Christian, never ever expected to get. My brother-in-law called me on the phone. I went to I can't find Poochie. I said, what? I can't find Poochie. So I was I jumped in the car and I east came down here and saw my wife out at the church and I, I cried for Poochie. And I walked past her and came inside and I was searching everything. I searched and saw that she wasn't here. The mystery of Simonia's disappearance is compounded by the fact that her father is not a man who is accustomed to going out. In fact, that Friday night was among the rare occasions that he was not home or didn't have at least one of his daughters with him. He wasn't home because he had gone to a setup with a relative who was visiting from overseas. And that night, on the time left, I should have been there. That night, I should have been there. And I'm not as the type of person who is in my home. Yeah, 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 yeah. The only night I am not here. The long cold road, I don't play them in anything at all. Whoever took Samonia also took her mother's cellular phone and the parents are adamant that the doors on their small wooden home were locked. My phone was inside the living room here. It was charging on the charger. The charger was still plugged in, but the phone was gone and the baby was gone. The door was still locked. Nothing out of place. Could she open the door? She can't open the door, but she's not going to lock. I'm not praying to that. It's the type of child when she goes to sleep, you know, hit that thing in the night, you know. Go tell them, you know, not even tea, you know, get up off. As little as the other one, not even tea. I sleep straight through the night. And even if she gets up, she's hidden in the room, she's not coming, like in an hour, she's not going outside. I do a boat in, we have boat in this. Since then, Every day for the Bloomfields has been a nightmare. Yanisha hasn't been able to work since, and July 2, when Simonia turned four, was like living in a personal hell. It, it wasn't easy. I cried all day. I did I came out of the house. I didn't do anything. Nothing, not even the bed, I didn't spread. All I did was cry because knowing that she was looking forward for her birthday and she knows that it's coming up. It, it was very hard. I can't explain to you how it was. 
but it was like part of me was just gone. Even now, Chris fights to hold back the tears as memories of Simonia come flooding back like a tidal wave. And she was a bright child talking. Good man, she bright man. Brilliant, very brilliant. And vibrant, she an excellent speed. Sometimes I'm going to go to art school late and she not, not even today she's not happy. I'm going to say she's still she's still on because she's so young and she's so young and she's so young and she's so young she's so young and 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 she's so young Samonia's disappearance has also been hard on her baby sister Daniela who turns two this month. It has been affecting her a lot because they normally sleep together. They play together, they do everything together. At nights, she don't want to sleep on the bed. She wants to sleep on daddy's tummy. And if she wake up in the night and don't and find herself somewhere else, she get up out of her sleep and find the tummy to lie down on. Until today, she and I were sitting in the house alone and she was asking for her. I have to just keep on telling her that she soon come. Where is Samonia? Who took Samonia? Why was Samonia taken? These are just a few of the questions that her parents ask daily. The Bloomfields have been racking their brains trying to remember if in the days, weeks or months leading up to Samonia's disappearance, anybody was acting differently towards their child. They've been coming up empty. I always vigilant, you know. I don't trust no one. Not even at home. There are some curious things, though, about the night Simonia went missing. For example, the dogs in the yard, the same dogs that rushed out and barked when we got there, were silent. The yard in which the Bloomfields live have houses beside them, in front of them, and behind them. Yet nobody saw anything. But, as if the shocking disappearance of their firstborn isn't bad enough, the family have also had to be dealing with a string of rumours. Among them are that Samunia's real father came and took her. Every ill word has been heard by the family. They have been getting rumours, and in order for them to find Pucci, they cannot keep these rumours. They even have to come to me and say X, Y, Z, because it's the best interest of the child, whether I like it or not. People are talking, but... When you know, I know the truth. That's all I need. I don't care what a person wants to say. That, that cannot help my daughter. And since the rumors started, community support in helping to find Samonia has waned. You find one and two young men came around just the same to help in whatever way they can. They said they go out and search. But up now, no, no support. At the same time, the family have been getting calls from people who claim to know where Samunia is. I got calls, some prank calls, present them CR and present them and them want money and so forth. Police left me there, yes, check it out, but I didn't know they haven't found anyone. They said the person, the person that they chip in a different name or different address or something. And Samonia is still missing. Crime Stop has issued a $300,000 reward for any information leading to her safe return. As the new school year starts, the parents are begging the person or persons who have Samonia to bring her back home. September morning is around the car. And just like any other father, I would like to have that joy to see my little girl go to school. Sending her off myself. So I'm appealing to anyone that has her just to return her. I don't want to know who you be. I don't want to know where you're from, anything about you. Just want to just return her, leave her at a safe location. If I believe her, she can find her way back. Also, you know, to other churches that are out there, I just like to say that. I'm imploring you to just, just pray for us, fast for us, you know, touch the children of God for us, that our daughter may return to us safe and secure. Anyone 
out there who knows Pucci where about seeing Pucci or even have her please please I'm begging you please she cannot do you anything she's an innocent child